Now, with European exploration, we're going to see that there are three primary, primary regions that begin exploration from Europe looking for a spice route to Asia. Okay, so there are three primary regions. We've got Portugal, Spain, and France United Kingdom. Now, I teach France United Kingdom lumped together because of the route they took and the, the area that they ended up colonizing. Okay, so we'll start with Portugal. Portugal is competing against these two Italian cities, okay? The Italian merchants were becoming very, very, very wealthy. They had cornered the market on exchanging goods from there in Europe to Asia. The primary good that is uh, being sold for such a high price are spices, okay? We've got salt, cinnamon, nutmeg, and cloves, okay? So those are the primary things, and silks, that sort of thing. The primary things that the Italian merchants are getting from Asia and selling back in Italy and making a huge profit. The rest of the countries in Europe are jealous because Italy has cornered the market. They are traveling through the Mediterranean Sea across into Asia and um, are defending their trade route. So the other European countries are jealous of their wealth and need to find their own route to Asia, okay? So the first main player that we're going to talk about is Portugal. Now, there's um, this guy named Prince Henry. He is the son of the Portuguese king. We call him Prince Henry the Navigator. Now, Prince Henry is not an explorer. He doesn't get in a ship and go exploring. He funds it, okay? He funds exploration. He sets up a school that teaches exploration skills, map making, compass reading, that sort of thing, okay? He also believes that we can set up trading posts around the coast of Africa, okay? Portugal is right there close to the northern part of Africa. There's just a little body of water, the Strait of Gibraltar, that kind of separates that Iberian Peninsula from Africa. So he believes that we can go around Africa and end up getting into Asia, okay? So the Portuguese have began traveling and exploring down that coast of Africa, setting up trade markets where they're trading goods from Africa and bringing them back to Portugal to be sold, that sort of thing. Now, Portugal also splits off and goes to Brazil. So now, Portugal ends up getting around Africa into Asia, and they also go to Brazil. If we're looking at South America, the country that speaks Portuguese in South America is Brazil, because Brazil colonized it. So there's Portugal. The second main player is Spain, okay? Spain goes a western route, okay? They set off and they end up exploring into the Caribbean, Central America, and then exploring on down to the western part of South America. If you were to go to Mexico today, the language that they speak is Spanish. A lot of the Caribbean islands speak Spanish. And almost every country in Latin America, except for Brazil, and a couple little tiny ones at the top, speak Spanish, okay, because that was the primary language that the European explorers brought with them. Okay, so we've got Portugal around the coast of Africa and to Brazil, Spain to the Caribbean, Central America, and almost everything else in South America. Now let's talk about France United Kingdom. Okay, France United Kingdom decide to take a northern trade route. They believe that you can kind of get go to the northern route and end up on the back side of Asia because the world's round. At this point, they're all at the same time exploring, not realizing that the um, western world is there. So France United Kingdom take that northern route and they end up along the St. Lawrence River. Okay, the St. Lawrence River is pretty much the dividing line between Canada and the United States, okay? We'll talk about more of the history and the events that happened between France and England there in that region. But just so you know, France United Kingdom take that northern route. The French primarily take the land north of the St. Lawrence River, and the English take the land south of the St. Lawrence River, where the 13 colonies end up um, settling first. Okay, so there are three main players. Um, Spain, Portugal, and France United Kingdom. Now, um, let's talk about the reasons for exploration. The primary one is for wealth, okay? They are jealous of those Italian merchants, and these countries are wanting to become wealthy like them. So how are they going to get wealthy? That trade route to Asia, okay? So wealth and the finding the trade route to Asia, those are the top two reasons for exploration. The third reason, the third reason is setting up a trade 
or um, establishing trade markets with the countries um, that they are colonizing so that they can get the natural resources and goods found in the new areas that they're claiming and sending them back to their European country. So trade route to Asia and wealth, a new market to sell their goods, and to spread their Christian religion. Okay, uh, Western Europe is primarily a Christian area. There are some differences with Catholicism and Protestantism, but it's a Christian religion that they all have. And they are wanting to spread it to the new lands they claim, but also to convert Muslims who were um, the second primary, primary, primary religion in the areas around them, in that African, Asian area. Okay? So, wealth, spice route to Asia, new market to sell their goods, um, spreading their religion, and imperialism. They're going to claim the land that they settle in. Okay? Those are the reasons for exploration. Now, outcomes of it. They find the trade route. They do claim more territory, so they do spread their, um, spread their land, their sphere of influence. They do spread their religion. Um, they do become wealthy because they do have a new market to sell their goods. But one of the negative outcomes of exploration is this. No matter what country they're from in Europe, and no matter where they end up, the natives that they come into contact with will be enslaved or die of European diseases, okay? The Native Americans that come into contact with these Europeans, their immune system have no immunity built up to the diseases that the Europeans are carrying with them, okay? Kind of like chicken, punk, uh, chicken pops or measles. If we have already experienced that discomfort and we come into contact with another person who um, has the chicken pox, chances are we're not going to get the chicken pox again because our body has built up a resistance, a tolerance um, to it. Our immune system is um, such that it is immune to that happening again. These Native Americans had no immunity built up to primarily um, smallpox, mumps and measles, chicken pox, that sort of thing, and they start dying like flies, okay? Um, those diseases that typically in Europe you would have medicines for um, and then a resistance built up to, the natives do not. So they usually end up being enslaved, dying of European diseases, or pushed to land that has a harsher climate or a harsher terrain. Outcomes of exploration. Now, this um, European colonies end up lasting for about 300, 350 years. Okay, they have claimed pretty much everything else in the world, okay, other than Asia. They've claimed that uh, Canada, United States area, they've claimed primarily all of South America, Central America, they've got their trading posts all around Africa and end up going into Asia. So their sphere of influence is extensive, okay? And that lasts, they end up controlling those colonies for about 300 to 350 years. Now, those colonies end up wanting their independence, okay? We've got the Revolutionary War that happens in um, the United States because those colonies want to get out of the influence of the King of England, and they end up fighting for independence. The areas in Canada, which are now all controlled pretty much by the French and English, are going to want their independence also. They'll end up uh, asking for it peacefully and negotiating for independence, but they want their independence. There ends up being um, wars for independence all in the countries of Latin America, and we'll have some major key players that we'll talk about in Latin America, including San Martin and Bolivar, Hidalgo, that those um, some names you'll be familiar with, Toussaint Leoverture. You'll become familiar with them when we get to our Latin America unit. But so all of these areas are declaring their independence from their European colony that they have um, come from. So these European countries have to find another land area that they can get natural resources from. This ends up leading to a scramble for Africa. Okay, these European countries are scrambling for more land because the Industrial Revolution is now happening there in England, I mean in Europe, and they need natural resources to be able to make more products, sell more products, and become more wealthy because they're kind of competing at this point. That scramble for Africa and the tensions that come out of that are one of the major causes of World War I. That's going to be the next video.